Hi, in this video, we will continue a journey with the concept of endpoint security groups, which makes ACA segmentation designs and configurations easier. Last time, we went through an introduction to the ESG concept. I did showcase the first ESG building and matching demo. Today, we'll take a step further and discuss simplified route leaking with ESG, again, backed by a demonstration with two scenarios. Let's get started. For today's demo, I will use a setup that we know from the previous video. As a reminder, let me do a quick recap of what we have done so far. In our tenant, Initech, we have two BRFs with different bridge domains and associated EPGs. Now, last time we created a couple of ESGs on top of the setup. Two of them are shown in the slide. From the left, we create ESG Match 1 VM name, either VRF2, where we group A1 and B1 virtual machines together even though they are served by different BDs. For that, we use the VMM endpoint policy tag. In VRF1, in V1, we use EPG selector to match all endpoints residing in EPGC to an ESG group named ESG match 3 EPGC. I know these names are artificial, but you know they clearly indicate what the logic behind them was. Now, let's clear this picture a bit and focus on what we are going to do now. In the first scenario of today's demo, I would like to show ESG shared service use case, so the regular route leaking between different VRFs. Let's assume that ESG3 provides a shared service that ESG1 will consume. For this communication to happen, we must ensure two things. First, routing reachability between VRFs, and second, security permission. In the first video, I stated that ESG decouples forwarding from the security, which you will clearly see in this case. Without ESG, to achieve that, we will need to configure a subnet under EPG for a provider, modify scope of subnets on both the provider and consumer side, and configure a contract. So let's see what the configuration steps when it comes to ESGs are. First of all, there are no changes are required at the BD level. Also, we don't need to define a subnet under the provider EPG, which is a great simplification already. But to achieve what we want, at the VRF level, we need to define a subnet to be leaked on both sides and the destination VRFs. In our case, in V2, I will configure the 192.168.60.24 subnet to be leaked to V1. Note that to ensure connectivity to a shared service for all the endpoints from this ESG, from ESG1, I would also need to leak the 10.610.24 subnet of the BDB as well. I have full control over that. I can leak all subnets. I can be selective. I can even share just a subset of any of these subnets, all right? For purposes of this demo, let's just stick to the subnet of BDA. On the side of V1, I will configure prefix 172.16.10.24 to be leaked towards V2. But again, I could use a subset of the subnet if I want. The last step is nothing new. We need a contract to allow the traffic between those two ESGs. Same rules apply here because this is a communication between different VRFs. We need to modify the contract scope from the default one of VRF to something relevant like application profile general or global. Right? That's it. There is nothing else to do than switch to live deployment and show how it's done. So first I'm going to pick from A1 to C1. 172. 16110. This obviously doesn't work because I don't have it configured yet. Good. Let me switch to the APIC and I will show you the BDA and BDC that for subnets there are no flags in the scope section configured. So let me go to the networking, bridge domains, first BDA. Nothing is configured. At BDC, nothing configured as well. Okay. Now, let me go to the VRS level. So on the B2, I will expand inter VRS leaked route for ESG. And I will click on EPG slash BD subnets. 
I give it an IP 192.168.60.24 to any tech tenant to v1. So I'm going to leave rest of settings as default. But in the next scenario, I will take a moment to discuss it. Okay. Hitting submit. There you go. And I need to configure the second side as well. So let me expand V1. And over here, I'm going to use the prefix of 172.16.1. Zero slash twenty four, and this is going to be leaked to the init the init tech tenant to VRS two. There you go. Let me check if ping works. No, it is not working. Why? Because we haven't configured contracts yet. So I have this contract already configured with a wider scope of a tenant, right? So I'm going to attach it right now. I'm going to attach it between ESG1 and ESG3. ESG3 is a provider of that contract. So let me go with and add provided contract. Shared service. And the ESG1 is going to consume it. Okay. There you go. Nope. The Bing works. Great. Let's move on to the second scenario of today's demo presentation, which is ESG shared as out. Let's add something else here. In VRF1, in V1, I configured an L3 out to the router, which has access to the external world. This router is sending a default 0 slash 0 route toward ACI. Now, we would like to use this L3L not only in the ESG3, which resides in V1, but also in VRS2, in V2, so that endpoints from ESG1 can access the external world. Now, for explanation purposes, I'm gonna focus on the V2 and ESG1 only, okay? Intentionally, I will skip a couple of configuration details as of now, but you will see a complete list of configuration steps executed later in the live environment. Step number one. Because we want bidirectional communication, we need to ensure that the external router knows about the bridge domain subnets used by ESG1. But we don't need to modify the scope of these subnets to advertise them external. Okay? I'm going to leave it as is on the PD level. Configuration from the next step, from the step number two, will take precedence and will ensure this is advertised properly. Okay, so step number two. In V2, I need to leak 192.168.60.24 to V1. Again, I could use also a second subnet. I could use a subset of any of these subnets. I decided to leak only BDA subnet, right? And actually, I already did it in the last scenario, so the configuration is in place. We, however, need to adjust it a bit, but let's leave it as of now. Step number three. In V1, we received a prefix of a default route from an external router, which we need to leak to VRF2, to V2. We'll do this configuration on the VRF level again, which is very intuitive, okay? I'm going to leak external prefix of 0 slash 0 from V1 to V2. The last part is configuring a contract that allows ESG1 to communicate with an external EPG named INETBCN. And from the first video, we know that placing a contract between an ESG and external EPG is supported. Let's now switch to my fabric to configure this scenario. To save some time, all items in V1 are already in place, so the communication between the endpoint in ESGC and the external world works. We will, however, review this configuration together and then enable the endpoint from ESG1 to communicate with the external world which will be a bit more tricky. That's why I chose to show it, okay? Good. Okay, so in my case, C1 can already access external worlds. So let me ping 8888, and that works, okay? So let's review the configuration that has been used so far. 
Let me show you the configuration of L3 out first. So I have the ASA INET L3 out, under which I have the external EPG of INET BCN. In this external EPG, I do have a subnets configured. Specifically, this is 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 .0 0.0. Uh, this means that for demo purposes, I'm classifying all networks, all external traffic to this only one external EPG. Then I have also external subnets for external EPG flag selected, which is used in ACI for policy enforcement. Okay, so everything I do here has no effect on routing or network itself. It's just a classification for security purposes, for policy enforcement purposes. This L3 out also provides a contract. It provides a contract of INET. This INET contract allows ICMP and is consumed by the ESG3. There we go. This allows me to use networks classified in the external EPG. Fair enough. Now, to ensure bidirectional communication, an external router must know my internal subnet of BDC, which is used by ESGC, ESG3. So I should do two things. I need to allow to advertise it externally. So let me go to the networking, to bridge domains, to the BDC, and to subnets. Right now, it is configured as advertise externally. And second thing I need to ensure is I need to associate it with L3 out. So I can either do it from the bridge domain level, or I can do it in a recommended way which is a default export route map under the SDL, where I just matched the BDC prefix. So let me expand under the L3L, let me expand this route map for import and export route controls. And I have default export route map over here created, where I have one item of match BDC, which you see it has the matching rules of the specific prefix of 172.16.1.0.24. On my router, I see that indeed I do receive this prefix via BGP. So show route BGP. There you go. 172.16.1.0. Class 24. Just for visibility, I will show you that I have one BGP neighbor here. Show BGP summary. So I'm receiving one prefix from this neighbor. And on the ACA side, show IP BGP. Summary of BRS in ETEC V1. Show IP route BRF in ETEC V1. Edit, this is received by a PGP. Okay. Now, what should I do to enable A1 to communicate with external world? because this is not working as of now. So ping 8888. And also when you check on my router, I don't have this prefix listed over here of BDA. So we discussed a couple of steps already. First, I'm not going to change anything on the BD level. So if I go to bridge domain, to the BDA, to subnet, I'm not going to change the scope over here. Now, what else in the networking? On the level of V2, I need to specify 192.168.6.0.24 to be linked into V1. This is configured already, but now I need to tweak it a bit. Now I need to allow S3 out advertisement, which basically means that this prefix will be allowed to be advertised externally. Now, is it visible right away on the external router? No, obviously, 
it is not visible because we didn't export this prefix on any LTL yet. So let me do this in a sec. Okay, so this is all from the V2 perspective. What about the V1? Let me expand VRF1. In V1, however, we need to create external prefix to be leaked into V2. So let me create this. This external prefix is going to be our default route. And I'm going to leak it to V2. Now, I give it an IP and mask and configure VRF destination of V2. As you see, this is more like a prefix list. So with operators like greater than or equal, less than or equal, I can match multiple routes. But in this example, I use the I use the exact route of the default one. Yet another point is send this prefix toward external router. So let me just add it in the default export mode. This is under L3 out. I'm going to create the new item here. This is going to be match BDA, and I'm going to create new matching rule. Create new one. Let's keep it the name of A192168602. And the matching prefix is going to be this IP, 192. 1686024. Uh, submit, update, submit. There you go. Now, on the router, I can see that this is indeed announced via BGP. But I still cannot ping the external web. What am I missing? The natural answer is contract. Two, let me consume it from ESG1. Let me go to ESG1, to contracts, and add this one as consumed contract. We used INET before. There you go. Does that work? No, it doesn't. Still, I need to modify the configuration under external EPG. Let's go here to the LT out to the external EPG to the subnets flag. Over here, I need to enable a flag of shared security import subnet, which is the same as the external subnet for external EPG, but for shared L3 out routes, so across VRFs. Basically, it assigns a global PC tag so that it can be used in different VRFs, okay? And by the way, as you may have noticed, I haven't mentioned any specific route controls, like shared route control subnet, for example, because their behaviors are achieved using simplified ESG route leaking settings configured previously, right? So it is just another example of decoupling forwarding from security from policy enforcement, which is configured in this section, plus using contracts. And there you go. It works, great, we did it. I can successfully ping 8888, which is the external location. Good. That's everything I wanted to share with you in this part two video and the entire introductory series to ESGs. As last time, I do recommend checking out the ESG chapter in the APIC security configuration guide for more detailed information around ESGs. I do recommend my Cisco blog on the ESG if you would like to get some fundamentals about ESGs. And also, if you have any doubts around shared L3 out concept, any doubts around uh, flags of the external EPG, I do recommend to play back Cisco ACI best practices series. Specifically, I'm referring to Cisco ACI external connectivity module. Good. I hope this has been informative. Thank you for watching. Cheers.